All right, greetings mech warriors. Okay, so we're here with the next installment. We're gonna be priming up our uh, Battlemaster that we've got all clean and ready to go, mounted on a little cork for ease of painting and angles. Um, so before we get started, we've got our mech, we've got some primer. I'm just using a black airbrush primer. This one's from Badger. Um, it's, it's fine, it's okay. Um, pretty much any primer that you want to uh, pick up should work for you. They all work roughly the same way. There's a Vallejo. Um, I ran out of black and I just haven't picked up more. That's also good. Um, I also use this kind of automotive sealer. Um, you have to cut this one with a little bit of thinning agent. Um, and that's actually the one I prefer the most. But for ease of use, we're going to use the Badger today because you just mix it up, <clears throat> drop it in, and you're good to go. You don't have to thin it or anything like that. Uh, I've got an old brush, just an old Citadel brush. Uh, I use that for mixing paint in the uh, cup of the airbrush and to clean off the tip if the needle tip gets a little bit crusty. And then just some airbrush cleaner. Um, you could use water and isopropyl alcohol if you wanted to. Um, you could buy cleaner from uh, one of the airbrush providers as well whatever you prefer to use. Uh, and then I've got my airbrush. So I would strongly recommend a dual action airbrush, meaning you can change the, uh, the amount of airflow and the amount of paint being introduced while you're painting uh, separate from each other. It's, it's, instead of a single action where it's all air all the time and then you're changing the amount of paint. Um, if you're gonna be doing any kind of detail work, you really want to be focusing on something that'll give you the most dexterity um, with how fine you're, you're inputting your paint and your and your air. <clears throat> so first up I'm just putting a little bit of water from my little little water container here uh, a couple drops in the cup. I always start off if I'm just starting up my airbrush for the day a little bit of a fluid clean fluid in it just so it's not paint or primer stuck directly down into the uh, the airbrush that way I'm not going to have an issue with paint drying or kind of crusting in the bottom down there. And then a couple drops of our primer. We don't need a whole lot. This guy's pretty small. I like airbrush primer because it's uh, it's thin. It's uh, easy to uh, easy to apply in thin layers. I don't have to worry about it getting all gummy or crusted up or anything like that. Drop my brush here. <clears throat> You can use rattle cans, they'll stick on a lot more, but, uh, but I definitely prefer to use my airbrush uh, just because I can you know, prime any time of the year. I don't have to go down to the garage to do it. It's not super stinky. It's just really easy and accessible for me. Groovy. Um, so I've got my airbrush, or my uh, compressor rather, set to uh, it's maybe like 25 PSI. Um, the thicker the primer you're putting through, you might want to have a little bit higher PSI. The, uh, the thinner you could go down a little bit. I usually hover between the 20 to 30 range, depending on what viscosity of paints I'm spraying. And then uh, I'm also keeping in mind that I don't want to do a big thick layer. I'm going to probably do a couple small passes from different angles, just making sure that I'm getting all the parts of the model covered. All right, so let's start off here. And the Badger brand is quite thin, so you want to do, uh, I generally only pull back on the, on the trigger, I don't know, maybe 10, 15 percent uh, range of motion. I use a lot of air and just a little bit of paint. So that way I'm able to kind of put a little bit of feather some paint on or feather some primer on and then I'm using a, so like I would add some paint and then I would keep spraying and it's just air. So I'm using it to dry the panels in the places that are still a little bit wet. And that way I can cruise through at kind of an increased pace. You don't want to uh, fully open your trigger, uh, leaving it on the same spot for a prolonged amount of time because then you're going to get some pooling and some spider webbing and whatnot. So just a nice, nice even coat. And I think that's, oh, we're out. Pretty good. There's a couple spots in the crevices and like in his armpits and stuff that are a little bit shy. So we'll just fix those real quick. <clears throat> He's looking pretty good. 
it's hard to see on the camera, I guess it's fairly shiny, but there are a couple of spots low that I would like to touch up. So under the feet, under the gun, under the hand, open part of the hand. I'll usually come at them from the underside first, and then I'll swap over to a mid-range pass, and then I'll do a top pass. That way I make sure that I've got all the angles, nothing's missing. Perfect. That looks good to me. We'll give it a couple minutes to uh, dry and set, and we'll uh, come back with our first pass of blue.